Welcome back, my students, to a brand new episode of Comic Class. In today's lesson, guys, we'll be looking at Batman Fear State. And this is the conclusion to James Dean and the Fourth and Jorge Mendez um, Batman run. And yeah, this is going to be a really fun story to talk about. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's story. Let's go. So this story basically starts off with Simon Saint basically going to Arkham Asylum uh, many months ago uh, from the, uh, you know, the modern timeline, the present timeline. And he basically goes to talk to Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow. And during this talk with the Scarecrow, he basically tells him that he's overlooked the work that he's done in the study of fear and the psychology of fear and stuff like that. And... Jonathan Crane, you know, the Scarecrow basically tells Simon Saint that he will work with him, granted that he gives him the things that he needs to be able to conduct his experiments and basically bring about the fear state to Gotham City, if this is indeed what Simon Saint wants. So, it seems like Simon Saint, with the abilities and the connections that he has, as well as the billions of dollars he has and the connections he has, basically is going to help uh, the Scarecrow basically bring about the fear state to Gotham City. So, that's a pretty cool way uh, to start the story in that now we know that Simon Sane and Scarecrow definitely are working together in order to bring the fear state to Gotham City. Now we jump into the present timeline with uh, Jonathan Crane, the Scarecrow, basically um, working on Batman, it seems. And he has Batman basically tied up to this chair and he's basically administering a ton of his fear toxin or at least a new version of his fear toxin on Batman and basically explaining to him on how fear was used on him when he was a little boy and that this enabled him to become something better more stronger than his previous self as he sees and that he wants Gotham City to experience what him and Batman have because Batman has lived through fear as well and it became a stronger person too but he wants this to be the case for all of Gotham City to go through something like this and we get to see while that's happening that the peacekeeper um, initiative basically from Simon Saint is basically going forward and they're basically trying to bring a new order to Gotham City and while that's going on we get to see that Sean Mahoney basically is uh, drugged up on the fear toxin that that Scarecrow had given him basically and while he's having all these uh, illusions basically and hallucinations he basically sees that there's a giant like UFO type uh, craft in the sky and yeah so we'll see what that is in a little bit but basically we get to see that Ricardo basically is talking to Simon and and tells them that they need to get Sean Mahoney back to them because he's basically waking out on the fear toxin that Scarecrow had given him. So they need, they need to capture him before he basically starts killing people or just causing mayhem in the city of Gotham. And this is where we're introduced the idea that um, Simon basically is going to try helping Ricardo and basically outfitting him with some type of suit to be able to go and bring uh, Sean Mahoney back to them in one piece, hopefully. But we get to see that Montoya basically is talking to her boss and he's basically telling her about the situation that's happening in Gotham City and she's basically not having it from her boss. And everyone's basically trying to just figure out what exactly is going on with the whole thing your state situation and we also get to see that scarecrow apparently had hacked into oracle's system basically is pretending to be oracle and we get to see the back girls um oracle barbara gordon stephanie brown and uh cassandra keen basically uh realizing that someone is pretending to be oracle basically putting her fear into gotham city stating that batman has been killed that he's dead basically and that uh, the fear toxin is basically in the water system in the air in gotham city that no one has an escape to what's about to happen and the whole system the whole setup that barbara gordon has basically blows up when she tries to hack into it or something like that basically get control back over it and it's really cool and we get to see that things are basically go not going the way that that the back girls wanted to but jumping into another scene we get to see that the gardener is basically talking to harley quinn and miracle molly and basically they have headed to poison ivy's area that she has underneath i guess gotham city or something um and we basically get to see that it's like this paradise garden and they basically take their fallen uh people and people that aren't dead basically to this place basically to get some rest and to heal and basically to give the collective um society or something like that 
um, these people that we saw in the Cowardly Laud volume, basically a place to stay while the whole situation with Fear State and them being once it is basically sorted out. So we get to see that Poison Ivy basically makes her appearance and Harley basically tries to get through to her as Gardner basically talks to her as well and we just get to see them all basically interact with each other and eventually we get to see Poison Ivy give a leeway to her friends that she has here and basically allow them to bring these people into her garden and her paradise. We also get to see that the other half of Poison Ivy is talking to uh, Catwoman, Selena Kyle, and basically she's trying to help her as well and finding who she is and stuff like that. And we'll see what exactly happens with Poison Ivy and Catwoman later on in the volume. And we also get to see that the next Batman, I believe, is also uh, shown to be gearing up to help in the Fear State uh, situation, so that's pretty cool. But basically, we get to see that Batman is still having an interaction with um, the Scarecrow, basically, and he breaks free of his binds, basically tries to attack the Scarecrow, but the Scarecrow basically explains and says that there's no stopping it now, Batman. There's no way to turn things back. The only way forward is through Fear State. And it says that Fear State begins. And yeah, there's no turning back, as Scarecrow says. And with that being said, let's go into the next part of the story. So we get to see that Batman starts tripping out on whatever Scarecrow did to him with this fear toxin slash like fear situation that we don't exactly know the full extent of what Scarecrow has done to evolve his fear toxin but it really affects Batman and while that's going on we're seeing that Sean Mahoney basically is being propped up by a Simon Sane now I believe this is a flashback or a commercial that was shot that we're seeing and this kind of like contrasting to what exactly is happening with Sean whereas he's you know waking out on uh Scarecrow's fear toxin and that mind control thing he's doing and yeah like I said we don't know the full extent of what Scarecrow is doing but he basically is implanting fear or enhancing fear in the mind and so yeah so going back to Batman we're seeing that Batman basically is still dealing with the effect so he gets into his Batmobile that he's able to call remotely I believe and once he gets in there he basically injects himself with a type of like anti-toxin and this gets him to where he can at least uh, think clearly in that so that's pretty cool but before it's able to work completely he sees the scarecrow in a type of like illusion hallucination type situation that he's trying to basically break into the Batmobile and yeah it's a pretty cool scene but as Batman states you know none of this you're not real basically so we get to see that again we're seeing like an interview that Simon Sane had done with uh, some of the news people basically showing off what the magistrate basically can do and it's pretty cool and at the same time we're seeing what's happening in real time and that Simon Sane is freaking out because you know uh, Sean Mahoney basically is going rogue because of the fear toxin and could bring really bad things to happen to the magistrate as far as public per perception basically goes so basically tells you know his group that they need to work to find where Sean is that they will be the ones to bring peace to Gotham City um, which is really cool and we jump into what's happening with Sean and he's still freaking out over you no know, he's basically still waiting out over the, the fear taunts and basically starts seeing regular uh, civilians as monsters and when he sees them he basically gets his weapons ready to basically kill them and you can kind of guess what happens next so going into what well, Batman's doing. Batman basically is going on top of the rooftops and he basically gets sneak attacked by Cassandra Kane slash Batgirl and he tells her you've been training and Cassandra's basically surprised saying you are alive and Batman says of course I am and he gets confronted uh, by Barbara Gordon and Stephanie Brown and it's really cool to see the Batgirls in this art style because I have been reading the Batgirls story um, that's out right now and basically the art style for that's like completely cartoonish and stuff like that so it's really cool to see them in this type of art style. But we go into, you know, the conversation basically explaining the whole situation that's happening with the fear state. And we get more information from Batman basically explaining to them that he needs to get in contact with Ghostmaker. Because he needs someone he can trust basically probe his brain and find out what exactly it is and the full extent to what um, Scarecrow did to Batman's mind basically. And if he's going to be 
a compromise to the whole mission at hand and saving Gotham from the fear state. So, Ghostmaker basically does get in contact with Batman, or Batman gets in contact with Ghostmaker, and they do arrange a meetup of sorts to basically figure out what's happening with Batman's brain. Um, so, in his mind, basically. So, we get, like I said, a whole conversation basically explaining what exactly is happening and what they need to do to basically fight against um, what, you know, what um, Simon Saint's doing with the Magistry as well as uh, Scarecrow's fear state plan uh, going into action right now and you know they basically say that to Batman that they are getting uh, someone basically impersonating Oracle was basically put more fear into Gotham City and that Gotham City is basically being completely doused with fear right now so Batman basically is just taking all this in and we get to see the Scarecrow basically is looking over Gotham City from one of the gargoyle uh, perches basically overlooking his master plan in fruition basically come to fruition as everyone's in fear in Gotham City Again, we get to see Flashbat showing a commercial uh, that they have done for uh, the whole Magistrate program with Sean Mahoney and stuff like that, basically with uh, Simon Singh praising him and for him being uh, Peacekeeper uh, number one. And we get to see that while well, that is turned off by Simon Singh, it seems, or at least it's implied, maybe it's supposed to be like it's mirroring what's happening now, but Ricardo is being turned into one of the magistrate and basically it's going to be called peacekeeper ads and this whole suit basically is a next level of technology and we get to see that simon basically announces uh ricardo as peacekeeper ads and he's basically giving him the mission to go and retrieve sean mahoney basically peacekeeper uh zero one which should be an awesome battle and um as he says there should be no way that peacekeeper ads should lose because he's a newer more efficient model compared to peacekeeper uh zero one so that's pretty cool now jumping into fear state part two we get to see that batman basically is patrolling the city trying to get to his destination to where he can talk to Ghostmaker and find out what's at least happening with him but he stops her quits talks to Montoya basically tells her that he's not basically dead and that as she says his death basically was exaggerated and that it's not true so that's pretty cool but he basically tells her that he needs her to make sure that misinformation isn't going to Gotham City, that they need to basically cool down and not let fear consume them, that they need the police basically to do their job and to basically find a way to calm the people of Gotham's hearts, basically, so that they don't let fear overtake them. So I thought that was really cool. We also get a cool homage panel to The Dark Knight Returns, which I thought was really cool, a nice homage to Frank Miller. But basically, Batman gets confronted by the Magistry, who basically say that no uh, masked vigilantes or costume vigilantes are allowed in Gotham City anymore, and Batman basically confronts them and says that he hopes that Simon watches closely, and he basically gets into a battle with the Magistry. This is a really cool action sequence, as we see Batman basically take on all these different Magistry soldiers. And the fight scene, like I said, is really well drawn, and he basically beats down all the different Magistry uh, soldiers with his gadgets as well as his hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's a really cool scene with Simon basically being surprised that Batman's this efficient against his soldiers despite being made to fight against these type of mass vigilantes and stuff. But after Batman beats that battle, basically he goes and he meets up with Ghostmaker as planned and they put on this device to basically allow Ghostmaker to go into Batman's mind, his subconscious, and in there we get to see that he's able to see what exactly Scarecrow was doing to Bruce when he was uh, hitting him with all that fear toxin or, you know, experimenting on him with the fear toxin that he has. And we get to see that Ghostmaker has to fight against these, like, type of uh, monsters or these enemies that are inside of Bruce's mind and eventually uh, Ghostmaker tells Bruce that after they find out what exactly is going on with Bruce's mind and are able to cure it he basically takes Bruce into his mind and shows him that he actually had an interaction with Jonathan Crane when they were in college or something like that and that this is where Jonathan explained to him the fear state and the plan he had for it basically hoping that in the future he'd be able to enact this plan and see what a result it would actually give so after he basically gets this whole explanation and shows Batman the explanation of the fear state Batman basically talks to the Ghostmaker 
it says that now that he, uh, you know, Scarecrow basically got into Pe Peacekeeper 01's head, that now he's basically like a, you know, the whole city's like a powdered keg, basically, and uh, Peacekeeper 01 is basically um, the fire, and this is basically going to end horribly for Gotham if Sean loses control. And we get to see that Sean actually has lost control already and that he killed all the civilians that were around him because of the fear tots and making him think that they were all monsters and stuff like that. But Peacekeeper Ed slash Ricardo basically shows up and tells him that he needs to stand down, that they're going to bring him back to Simon and that if it comes down to it, they're going to have to take him down. But they're wanting him to basically just give himself up. And it's pretty cool that we get to see that Simon basically is wanting Sean to come back, but Sean basically uh, waking out on the fear talks and basically states that, that I'm the hero and stuff like that. So it looks like all the players are coming to play and we're gonna get a fight between Peacekeeper X versus Peacekeeper 01. So uh, once we see that, we go into what's happening with Miracle Molly. She's basically having an interaction with Poison Ivy's uh, more uh, savage half, more uh, evil half. And she basically is explaining to her the evolution of mankind and how we have the potential to do good or evil and that people should be able to make that choice for themselves and that there are people that will choose to do good over evil whereas this version of poison ivy or this half of her is more pessimistic and rather just close her saw off from the world and away from people instead of giving them a chance so it's a pretty cool interaction and seeing the two sides of how they view humanity and stuff like that as well as how um, miracle molly views humanity in general and that she believes everyone should be given a second chance and she explains that there's a machine that they uh, their collective basically uses to wipe the memories of people and stuff like that and allow them to get that second chance for themselves and once she talks to Poison Ivy about this it clicks to her that Scarecrow might want to use this machine in his fear state plan so basically, so basically she goes off to go talk to Batman to explain to him what she thinks Scarecrow's plan is all about and what he plans to do to use that machine so we get to see that simon basically signed to ricardo through his like bluetooth slash uh a talking device and basically tells him that he needs to try getting uh sean back without killing him that they need that armor that sean is wearing so basically try not to destroy it too badly if it comes down to that but if it comes down to it basically kill him so that they can get the armor back and we get to see that Peacekeeper uh, Atz, basically his armor is made out of like nanotechnology and that it's way more advanced than what Peacekeeper 01 is using. So he should be able to take him in a fight, no problem. So Ricardo basically tells him basically to stand down and that Sean needs to basically just give it up and let them help him. But before he can help him, we get to see that Sean sees Ricardo as a type of monster, a bat-like monster resembling Batman. They see him as Batman basically as uh, Scarecrow basically is has like I guess a talking device to Sean as well and is just kind of like feeding him information telling him that it's Batman Sean and that Sean basically goes on the attack basically trying to prove himself as a hero of Gotham City so he gets to do a fight with Peacekeeper Eds and the fight's pretty cool and um, we get to see that the I guess the anti the antidote that um, Peacekeeper Eds was holding Ricardo basically gets shattered um, during this first attack by Peacekeeper 01 and Sean basically has basically sealed his fate as Simon tells Ricardo that he just wants him to kill um, Sean basically like the lonely dog that he is and they basically get into a fight to the death basically uh, despite Ricardo not wanting to kill Sean because he sees him as a war hero or like a hero of Gotham basically which is really cool he sees them as like an American hero, as he says later on uh, in the uh, volume. Uh, but Peacekeeper uh, 01 basically attacks a ton of the Magistrate and basically cuts through their armor like it's butter, which is crazy considering that Peacekeeper 01 is not supposed to be so advanced to be able to do this type of stuff, but yet he's surpassing expectations and killing all these Magistrate members. So Ricardo basically tries not to go too easy on him and they get into a confrontation and a fight. And Ricardo has a little more expertise in hand-to-hand -hand combat it seems as he's able to get the upper hand on Sean. And he knocks Sean into a building, a nearby building, but Sean basically 
escapes before uh, Ricardo can find him. And we get to see that before Ricardo can basically find where Sean's at and follow him, that Batman shows up and attacks uh, Ricardo slash Peacekeeper at, which is a really cool, probably my favorite panel in the entire volume. Just an awesome panel how it was drawn. So. Batman basically is talking to Simon because he knows Simon is hearing through his like Bluetooth device, talking device. Basically tells him that he needs to know what exactly Simon is doing. Like why is he trying to destroy the evidence of what he's done? Basically with Sean Mahoney basically losing control to Scarecrow's fear toss and that his soldiers basically aren't 100% uh, foolproof when it comes to fighting superheroes and supervillains or you know uh, mass vigilantes as as Simon and the Magistrate basically likes to call them all. And yeah, so we get to see that Scarecrow basically is talking to Sean again and basically telling him that he needs to keep fighting because he's basically failed a lot in his life. He failed oh, time and time again. He has to make sure that he doesn't fail this time as well. And you know, we get to see that Batman's trying to reach to uh, Sean basically trying to get him to basically stand down and let him help him because he knows the Scarecrow is influencing Sean way more than Sean is influencing himself and doing these actions that he's doing a lot of these things out of fear instead of like duty so before Sean can basically you know come to Batman uh, and bring basically come to his senses he's attacked by Ricardo basically and him and Ricardo basically get into another fight and Ricardo unleashes a type of like cannon it's called a charge light cannon and it explodes an entire portion of a building basically showing high uh, power and what it's able to do like high power capacity basically and Batman attacks Sean as well as Ricardo and says Saint you maniac what have you let loose in this city and um, Batman's right because yeah like this thing could literally kill so many people if you have stuff like this running around the city basically just doing whatever they want and you know feeling that they're um, obligated to basically kill people if they don't follow the law or something like that um, so it's just crazy that they would put this much power you know that Simon would put this much power into one of his uh, peacekeepers so once we get to see uh, this basically go down Simon says order Batman this is what order looks like and we get to see tons of magistrate soldiers basically come up against Batman and Sean uh, to help Ricardo basically bring back Sean Mahoney but what's crazy is that uh, Sean Mahoney did not get hit completely by the blast he was able to basically shrug it off um, because it didn't hit him point blank basically and that he got only a partial hit and that he's still standing um, as Ricardo states and Ricardo's surprised that he was able to do this and survive such an attack even if it was only a partial hit but they basically go into more hand-to-hand -hand combat as Simon says that it will take 15 seconds for it to completely charge again his blast his uh, light cannon and they needs to kind of like stall Sean before that happens, um, you know, so that it can charge all the way. So Simon basically um, thinks that this is over as Ricardo is able to buy the time he needs as it's completely charged his light cannon and he goes to fire it again. But Sean basically puts his hand or his sword, his blade sword hand in the cannon which explodes it and takes off both his and Ricardo's arms that have their weapons and after that which surprises Batman and Simon and Simon knows that this is basically it that uh, Sean has basically lost his mind so much he's willing to sacrifice his arm in order to win this battle which is a different type of resolve than what Ricardo has and which is the reason why Sean will win this battle so Sean basically tackles Ricardo to the ground and takes off his mask I'm not sure if he like blasted it off with the explosion the recoil from the explosion blasted Ricardo's uh, helmet off his mask but Simon basically watches as Ricardo is beaten to death as Scarecrow basically praises and gives Sean directions on what he needs to do to basically become the hero Gotham needs basically in his eyes and he basically kills Ricardo in cold blood which is kind of a brutal scene one of the most brutal scenes I've seen in a Batman comic in the last few years even after reading Tom King and all of James Tinian's runs so far 
Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but the, Simon basically says to activate the self-destruct sequence on Peacekeeper X's armor as well as the Magistrate soldiers, and that they can't allow Batman to basically recover any of the armor and the material that it, uh, their suits are made out of, their armors are made out of. And the co-workers basically explained, the employees explained that Ricardo's family should be thought of because with this type of explosion, they're wanting to be a body to bury, basically. But Simon says that he knows what he's doing, he knows the consequences, to just do it, basically activate the soldier short sequence. So Batman basically makes his way out of there as all the magistrate soldiers, as well as Peacekeeper Ed's armor basically blow up in their self destruct sequence and they blow up all together. And it's kind of crazy the, the amount of soldiers that blow up at least a giant explosion in Gotham's entire city block, basically. Uh, so one of their city blocks basically completely gone. And Sean basically survived this point blank explosion, which is insane. As well as uh, Scarecrow basically make his way out of there. And it's kind of crazy. We get to see that Miracle Molly shows up and gives Batman a hand as she tells him that things might look bad, but it's only going to get worse from here on out. And that basically ends Fear State Part 3. And yeah. So going to the next part of the story, we get to see that Simon basically is freaking out. It says that he wants his people to go and try to recover Ricardo's body. And they say there really shouldn't be any body to recover after an explosion took out an entire city block. And before Simon can basically come to his senses, he's told by uh, one of his other employees that the people in City Hall basically want to talk to him. The mayor basically wants to talk to him. That he doesn't have time to basically talk to the mayor in that because he has all these things to basically deal with. And one of the employees basically comes up to him, basically tells him that apparently Poison Ivy has the entire, uh, her, she has her powers basically on the entire bottom of Gotham City, that if she were to will it, she basically destroy Gotham City, and that the destruction will be even worse than a no man's land, which happened way back in Batman's history, I believe in the 90s, or early 2000s, I think it was the 90s when that happened, slash early 2000s. But, or the beginning of the 2000s, basically, uh, which was the Batman No Man's Land storyline slash story art. But yeah, so we get to see that Simon basically says that everyone needs to listen, that he has a new plan, and that's to go capture or to get Poison Ivy mad so that she can destroy Gotham City or something like that, which is crazy. But we get to jump into what's happening with Poison Ivy, that she has a talk to the leader of the Collective Society, and that he was actually a person that worked with the Mad Hatter at once, but because of his morals, he felt like the Mad Hatter was going too far, and he wanted to go his own way and basically help people his own way, which I thought was pretty interesting, and giving that character a little more depth, and uh, character art, basically. Uh, character progression, as you could say. But jumping into the other characters, you can see that Sean Mahoney has survived the blast of the city block blast of all the magistrate soldiers and uh, Peacekeeper X's uh, armor blowing up. We get to see that he's basically kind of surprised that he survived the entire explosion. And they can basically feel his hands, basically, as he says, that I can feel my hand. And he's confronted by Scarecrow and basically tells him that he did what he needed to do and that he's not a bad guy as Shamoni basically says that Scarecrow that you're a villain a bad guy and Scarecrow basically tells him that no that he's a scientist basically he's a doctor and that you know he says I am a doctor and it's the city that's sick basically or the city that's bad that it's sick and that I have the cure and he basically tells him that you know Sean is basically the cure. And that's pretty interesting as we can tell he's using Sean, but Sean basically goes for it and basically follows the Scarecrow as he leads him to his hideout or something like that. So we get to see that Batman basically is with Miracle Molly and they basically head off to one of the collective's hideouts because she needs to go check if the machine is still there. And while they're on route, basically are en route to basically find this machine, we get to see Batman basically talk about how he's moved past a lot of his fear that he used to have and that he puts his faith in his comrades, basically his children, to basically keep Gotham safe when he's not able to be there all at once. Which I thought was really cool in giving the Bat family a type of purpose and showing exactly the importance of what the Bat family actually is, as well as the supporters of the Bat family as well that might not be part of the Bat family in general but still work to help the Bat family and Gotham in general in staying safe. And I thought that was really cool, and I really enjoyed this uh, page. 
uh, showing all the Bat Family and uh, supporters of the Bat Family. I thought that was really cool. But jumping into Batman and Miracle Molly, they go and they find the collective's hideout. Basically, as Miracle Molly uh, shows Batman this place, and he shows that there's actually more to it. She shows them there's more to it than what's on the surface, and basically shows them that there's an actual device that can erase memories, but it has a bigger purpose in that. In that, it can actually, I think, implant memories or something like that, or make people think the things that they want them to basically so in the wrong hands this can put certain images like fear images into um people's minds if that's what scarecrow is planning on doing but as they get closer to the machine they're attacked by one of the collective members which is held by one of Miracle Molly's inventions, which are like these gauntlets that he wears. It basically attacks Batman by surprise. So Batman gets knocked back, but before he can basically get into a fight with this guy, he basically tells Miracle Molly what exactly should he know about this guy. And she basically tells him that if he were to punch Superman, he basically should feel it. And that, you know, that if he punched Superman, he'd feel it. And Batman says that that's not encouraging, and Miracle Molly says that she's good at the job that she does, which is making weapons and stuff like that for the collective. But uh, Miracle Molly basically goes and tells Batman to let her deal with this as she goes and uses her speed to basically block his attack and his punch. And basically uses her own devices to basically deactivate the gauntlets and take them off of the collective member. And after that's done, Batman basically is told by Miracle Molly that all he is now is basically a 400 pound uh, wall of muscle. And uh, Batman basically tells her that I've handled worse. He basically makes quick work of this collective member as he is telling the truth is he does fight people like Bane as well as you know other strong um, characters that are definitely way more heavier than that. So I thought that was a really cool scene showing off Batman's fighting skills and stuff like that and how he can handle people bigger than himself. So Batman, I guess, is holding some of the anti-serum that he gave himself in the Batmobile on him just in case so he can help people if they need it, if they need it, basically. So he gives it to the collective member and says that he'll be out, basically, for another 24 hours. And that once, you know, that they're done, basically says once we're done that I'll help uh, deprogram Stir Crow's unconditioning, just like uh, Ghostmaker help uh, Batman basically deprogram himself, basically, from, uh, from uh, Stir Crow's conditioning as well and because scarecrow's fear toss is basically hitting a different level i guess maybe basically maybe due to this machine that miracle molly is explaining as it has indeed been stolen by scarecrow and that she should be able to make something to basically counteract this device or something like that basically um batman says if you know, can you build something that could track it? Basically, the uh, mind device. And Miracle Molly basically says that I guess that all depends on what they left me to work with to the Miracle Room, as she has her own room basically to work on this stuff, it seems, um, and to make her creations or devices that she made. But we jump into Scarecrow and Sean Mahoney, and basically Sean tells Scarecrow what exactly is going to happen, how can he basically save, you know, what is this place, basically, and Scarecrow basically ties uh, Sean Mahoney down and gives him this helmet basically to put on. And he says that he's going to douse him with fear. And basically, when he comes out of it, he's basically going to be a stronger person, a better person, which is really cool um, to see. So we'll see how that turns out uh, later on in the volume. But basically, uh, we get to see that the Magistrate do arrive to basically take on and to take out Poison Ivy, basically to get her mad to take out the entirety of Gotham City with her powers. But before the collective leader basically can calm her down and he says what's wrong, uh, Poison Ivy states that she knew she shouldn't have let people in here, you know, the collective members, she shouldn't have let them in here. So now it's opened the door for other people to come in and the magistrate are here and that it's time to tear down the city and let nature reclaim it as her own. And the... Fear State Part 4 basically ends with the Magistrate basically invading Poison Ivy's Sanctuary and Simon Say saying good, now bring me Ivy's head. So that's pretty cool. So jumping in to the next part, which is Part 5 of Fear State. Fear State Part 5 basically starts the Magistrate basically being confronted by Ghostmaker. So Ghostmaker shows up and basically says that he's not going to allow 
um, them to go any further, but he has made a promise to a dear friend that he won't kill anyone. So we get this really cool splash panel, splash page of Ghostmaker, which I thought was really well drawn by Jorge Jimenez. And yeah, so basically he goes into a battle. He gets to a battle with the Magistrate. He basically takes them apart, which is really cool. And we just get to see them basically do some action panels, basically showing off Ghostmaker's skills with, the, with his swords and basically showing him dodging uh, light attacks, his light, the light uh, beams basically, and just taking him out with hand-to-hand -hand combat and his swords, which is really cool to see. And we get to see that Poison Ivy is about to basically destroy Gotham as it's shown that she's basically affecting Gotham's entire environment and there's like weeds coming out of the ground and stuff like that and while that's going on we get to see that Batman and Miracle Molly are making their way as she was able to find a way make a thing to track the mind machine basically but before they even get to Scarecrow's hideout they're confronted by Scarecrow um, as he's uh, on one of the corners of the sewer that they're basically traveling through it basically tells them that the time that their time is up basically or your time is up as the fear machine basically has been activated and that all of gotham is basically succumbing to fear and he demonstrates this as he activates his fear machine basically or fear toxin machine um, device and basically Miracle Molly gets you know gets doused with fear basically and she's basically losing her mind with all the fear that she is uh, being doused with and Batman basically tells Scarecrow to basically let her go uh, he basically tells Crane let her go and uh, Crane basically tells him to follow him to his hideout as he explains to him what exactly he's doing his entire master plan. Um, as Starcrow isn't really a fighter type character, um, this is very in line with what he would actually do in character. And that here he knows he's basically won the battle and that the whole city is doused in fear. And Poison Ivy is about to destroy Gotham and all this basically going according to Scarecrow's plan. Maybe not Poison Ivy destroying Gotham, but the whole fear aspect and Gotham being solely destroyed is definitely going to put people into more fear, which goes into Scarecrow's plan. So it still works for what he's basically aiming for, it seems, in the fear state for Gotham City. But they basically, Scarecrow leads Batman and Miracle Molly to his hideout where Sean is basically being doused with fear over and over and over again. So they basically evolve him as um, Scarecrow states into a better person. And Batman basically is being told by Miracle Molly to make Scarecrow stop. Uh, the fear that's basically uh, plaguing her, basically, and making her douse with fear, just dousing her, dousing her. Um, and we see that Scarecrow isn't going to stop, so Batman basically tries to destroy the machine, the mind machine, that Scarecrow is using to douse all these people in the city, I guess. Um, but Scarecrow basically gets out of his outfit, out of his costume, as he tries to stop. Uh, Batman from stopping the machine from uh, dousing the people with fear in the city and as Jericho says that no I won't let you ruin this not when I'm this close and he basically tells Batman why he's doing all this and that he Gotham has to be allowed to evolve that they must go through what him and Batman have gone through through fear to basically become what they have become and what will the city basically become you know that he says no Batman she needs to learn and so do you fear is stronger than and before he can, he can finish his sentence we hear a blam go off basically a gunshot go off and we see that Scarecrow has been shot Jonathan Crane starts looking at himself as he's bleeding from the chest and Batman basically he yells out Crane as uh, Scarecrow looks down and sees the blood. He basically collapses on the floor. He falls down and we get to see that Sean Mahoney basically has been the one to shoot Scarecrow slash Jonathan Crane. He says figured it was about time he shut up and we get to see that Sean has indeed survived his fear state or you know the fear state that he experienced in his mind. You know he was just doused for who knows how many hours with the fear toxin slash fear mind uh, machine thing and we get to see that Batman basically turns off the device uh, freeing Miracle Molly and the rest of Gotham from their fear state basically or something like that or at least Miracle Molly um, is freed from her fear and we get to see that Batman basically tells uh, Sean that he should know you know what he needs to do now basically and being a better person and that 
um, that he should see that Saint, you know, Simon Saint and Crane, they were both using um, Sean Mahoney, basically. But Sean says that I see a lot of things now, Batman, and that he knows what he needs to become, what he could become, for better or for worse, no good or bad, and that it's about power. And this is where Batman basically tells Miracle Molly she needs to get out of there, basically uh, disarm the fear bomb, basically what's harming the entire uh, city of Gotham or is about to harm the entire city of Gotham. I'm not sure if the bomb went off or not, or, you know, if it's activated or not. Maybe it's not even activated and that the whole city is just fear-driven because of the stuff that they've gone through in this arc, uh, as well as uh, previous story arts as well, and all of James Tinian's uh, run, you know, James Tinian the Force run so far. But Sean basically put puts on his Peacekeeper 01 mask and him and Batman basically get ready to battle as he basically says that Batman isn't enough to save Gotham City, but I am, I can see that now clearly. And Batman basically, you know, is staring him down as Sean basically says, look at you, you're a kid in a Halloween costume, you're no better than Scarecrow or any of the other freaks you've let ruin this city, you think you can scare me? And it's a really cool speech by Sean because, it's, you know, he's been basically fed this narrative that he's better than them because he's just a person that is legally given the right to basically take on crime, whereas these people dress in costumes and basically either fight crime or commit crime be it alone or in teams, groups, families, whatever. So after that, we get the fight beginning and we get a really cool splash page showing a ton of different panels of uh, the fight going on. And Batman's uh, really outclassed here. And the only thing Batman really has are his gadgets and his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Because as far as power goes, as far as durability goes, Sean has him beat in that the dude can literally survive entire city block getting blown up. So this is a battle that Batman's really going to have to fight to try to win. So Miracle Molly basically goes to basically stop the fear bomb, I guess, from going off or to try to modify it, basically. And then she needs to modify it in a way to basically uh, turn it off or basically to make it to where it doesn't inject the entire city of Gotham uh, with fear. But she sees that Scarecrow apparently is alive and that he can help her basically do some modifications to basically fit the, the fear bomb, basically, so that it doesn't kill, or it doesn't uh, douse uh, Gotham in fear. But the fight continues between Batman and Sean, as Sean tries to basically kill Batman with his uh, his sword hand, basically, his sword arm, and he gets very close to stabbing Batman, but Batman uses his agility to basically dodge his attacks and utilizes his batterings basically to explode on Sean's body and this does damage Sean a bit as Sean does cry out in pain as he has been damaged a lot from his uh, previous encounter with uh, Peacekeeper X it seems. He's not completely healed yet so that's pretty cool and shows that Batman does have a chance here and that Peacekeeper 01 isn't completely uh, invulnerable it seems at this moment because he did take a lot of damage from that city block explosion as well as Ricardo's uh, light cannon attack that he partially got hit by. But Miracle Molly basically talks to Scarecrow and Scarecrow questions her if she really wants to not let Gotham evolve and that she can allow Batman to basically die to Sean, allow uh, Gotham to go through this fear bomb uh, experience and basically evolve and be a better city because of it. So Miracle Molly basically is given this ultimatum basically from Jonathan Crane. But before we see what her decision is, we get to see that uh, Poison Ivy basically is attacking everybody and is confronted by Harley Quinn who tells Poison Ivy that she's brought someone that she would like to talk to, that she's not going to listen to her and maybe she'll listen to herself. And that's how basically Fear State um, issue number, I believe, six uh, ends. Um, and yeah, our part sits in, and it's a really good ending for part sits as we're heading into the conclusion to the Fear State uh, story arc. And this is basically the meeting between Poison Ivy's uh, evil half and her good half, it seems. Jumping into the finale for the Fear State uh, story arc, we get to see that Simon Saint basically is trying to figure out what exactly is happening with Peacekeeper 01 and Batman as the signal basically gets lost and we get to see that they're confronted 
him and his employees basically by the Bat family wearing magistrate uh, armors. And it seems like they're going to take Simon Saint in for questioning as well as, them, as his employees. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be going to jail, but as far as Simon Saint, definitely going to jail for the stuff he's called Gotham City and all the news that is coming out and evidence that has came out against him uh, for his involvement in what happened in the Cowardly Lot and the setups he did to get his magistrate basically legalized and stuff like that. So that's really cool as well as what's happening with um sean mahoney basically and peacekeeper zero one um actions basically um you know in this uh storyline too so uh, in story art so we get to see that happen and we jump back into the fight with batman and peacekeeper zero one and it's really heating up as batman's taking a huge beating from peacekeeper zero one as he's basically fighting back as well as taking a beating so it's basically seeming like an even match between the two so jonathan basically talks to miracle molly as he once again explains that should she stop the fear bomb from going off because this could be the rebirth that gotham needs in order to become a better place but before she can be swayed and as she states that jonathan's basically just trying to run the clock out so that the fear bomb can go off she basically knocks him out with like a slam to the ground basically with her hand she slams his head to the ground basically knocking him out and we get to see that she's now contemplating what exactly she needs to do as she finally gets the axis to disarm the bomb we get to see that she's thinking about what jonathan said and if she should indeed stop the fear bomb uh or let gotham city basically experience the fear state and therefore evolving them but of course a lot of people will die in the aftermath of that considering what we saw what happened with sean mahoney killing innocent people that definitely will happen with a ton of other people who experience the fear state as well so we'll see what happens but we get back into the fight we get another cool splash page showing all these different action uh panels so slash action action sequences that happen during the fight and it seems like they're pretty even which makes a lot more sense because Sean has taken a lot of damage but Batman has taken a lot of damage as well but he has a lot more experience in fighting battles where he's taking a lot of damage so this makes a lot more sense and that they would be a little even during this end portion of the fight but going into what's happening with Poison Ivy and Harley Poison Ivy basically is told by Harley Lee that she's lost a piece of herself this entire time and that she needs to be two pieces of a whole. Basically, they need to come back together again in order to make a rational decision of what she should do next. And that she needs to have that kind, compassionate part of herself in her before she makes that type of decision and destroying Gotham City completely, killing all those people, basically everyone in Gotham City. So she basically takes the hand of the other Poison Ivy, the good portion of her, and they fuse into one person again. And when they Fuse, they basically made the decision, or she makes the decision now as a whole, to basically not destroy Gotham City. And she basically allows the vines that were all around the city to basically bloom these type of flowers. They release these hormones to basically uh, ease the fear of the people of you know uh, gotham city she also uses uh ty some type of like healing power that she has one of her healing powers to basically um heal the girl that was given to her by um the collective basically that they were kind of like keeping her here and she was basically very damaged in the last volume which was the cowardly lot so uh miracle molly is like a student or like little sister as you could say type character she gets healed basically by poison ivy and poison ivy basically grabs Harley Quinn she says there's one last thing she needs to do and she basically gives her a kiss so it seems like they're in a relationship again so we'll see how that plays out in future issues and yeah so after all that is said and done we go back into the fight with Batman as they go into their final positions fighting positions as they know that this is basically going to be it that they're both running out of stamina and this is where we get to see that Sean basically is saying that, you know, he's basically going to kill Batman and going to take the credit of killing Batman. And that, you know, he's going to let the bomb, basically, they going to dismantle it on camera or something like that. Basically, he wants to see, he wants Gotham City to see that who's really in control now, basically. And Batman says that no one is coming, Sean, it's already falling apart. That you don't get your future, uh, neither does Scarecrow. And then he says that you won't be a hero, you'll spend the rest of your life behind bars. And this is where Batman takes off his utility belt and he wraps it around his, uh, his hand, basically his fist. And with this utility belt around his hand, he basically runs at 
um, Sean Mahoney, basically, and he tells Sean that he wants to be a hero, but he never understood the one thing that makes a hero, which is putting others above yourself, and that all Sean wanted, uh, you know, everything he thought about was about himself, and that's why you can never be a hero, and this is where we get the final hit as Batman jumps you know, above uh, Sean and lands his fist, basically like a backhand, his fist on Sean uh, Mahoney's uh, head as he slams him to the ground with his utility belt um, fist, basically, and that basically puts Sean Mahoney slash Peacekeeper zero one out of commission. It's a really cool splash page, and that ends the battle of Batman and Peacekeeper zero one slash Sean Mahoney. And they will definitely fight in the future. He will definitely be coming back, as we'll talk later on in the story. And yeah, so we get to see that Batman BC looks back at Miracle Molly and tells her, Miracle Molly, have you disarmed the bomb? And Miracle Molly basically says, not quite. And we get to see that she basically has the trigger, and she says that she, that she rewrote the program to basically erase uh, everyone's memories of what happened in the fear state as well as like other stuff as well and kind of like just taking away everyone's memories so that they can actually start over and Batman basically says he can't do this and that Miracle Molly says that I have to so the only way the city will ever change and this is where Batman tells her that you can't do this because you're taking away people's right and their will to actually change on their own uh, you know naturally organically so he starts walking towards her and she basically says that you know not to take any other step or she'll push the button but Batman basically tells her that he wants her to see what he sees as he puts her basically to his I guess his cow and that it has like some type of like feed device to see what his bat family is doing and he shows her Gotham City uh, news stations and stuff like that and all the stuff that is bad family is always this uh you know bat family allies are basically doing as well and that simon saint is basically being put in prison and the uh, people's fears basically being doused by poison ivy's um uh, hormone uh, plants and stuff like that. Uh, Poison Ivy has basically been put together through love by Harley Quinn and the Magistrate program has basically been discontinued and stuff like that. Basically all the bad stuff has been finally uh, resolved uh, which is cool and we get to see that the Bat family are looking up into the sky as we see that the Bat signal basically is being shown once again uh, for Gotham City to see showing them that Batman has indeed saved them from Scarecrow's fear state. And you know not only Batman but the Bat family as well as the Bat family allies as well. Everyone worked together to basically make this happen. And I thought the splash page showing the Bat family and their allies was amazing um, because you know it's really cool to always see the Bat family together working together and stuff like that. And it's a fantastic splash page overall. So Miracle Molly decides not to push the button and Batman actually reveals his identity to her and basically tells her that he doesn't know if he's right about this whole Gotham City changing, you know, in the future or now. But he tells her, I'm not sure I'm right either. There's not much in this world I am sure of, but I do believe. I thought that was a really good line from Batman in that it's basically the whole point of this whole story arc is believing in a future, basically in a different future. I thought that was a really cool line. So it kind of like encompasses all the point of the entire story arc and the messaging is trying to uh, relay. So I thought that was really cool. And Batman basically, after Miracle Molly puts down the device that uh, would activate the fear bomb, or in this case, the memory wiping type bomb, uh, she says, I want, I want to believe too. And she hugs Batman and Batman tells her it's all right. Everything's going to be all right. And that ends uh, basically uh, this portion of the fear state uh, story arc. As we see one of the like dandelions or like some type of flower basically rise from the ground or has uh, risen from the ground basically um and just symbolizing a new beginning for gotham hopefully or a new start for all these characters as they try to rebuild for a better future i thought that was really good now jumping into the last portion of the story which is the fear state omega uh issue uh, which ends off this entire fear state uh, story arc um yeah 
So Fear State Omega basically starts off with Jonathan Crane being wheeled off basically to go to I think Arkham Asylum or something like that or some type of like uh, mental institution. But we get to see that Montoya basically has an interaction with Jonathan Crane and Jonathan Crane basically tells her that she couldn't allow Gotham to evolve, that they couldn't allow change to actually happen. They knew that this thing he was doing would have actually brought about a change, whereas now they will live in the same cycle that they've been living in, it seems like, forever. Um, which I thought was a really cool, like, meta commentary talking about, like, how it must be for these characters always, uh, going back and forth, uh, throughout comic history because of the need to not change too much, which I thought was really cool, but it does work in story as well, um, in that, you know, he did have a plan for the future, but they refused it. Um, and I thought it was really cool because someone like Jonathan Crane would see his way as the the only way uh, of you know bringing about the evolution of Gotham City but Montoya basically says that she doesn't want to hear from him that they thought that they would have had his mouth like you know closed shut basically so he basically gets slammed into um, the carrier uh, van basically and they go off to basically take him and deliver him to the mental institution and we get to see the two guards basically talk to each other exactly how bad Jonathan Crane is as a villain which I thought was really interesting as one of the guards doesn't see Jonathan Crane slash Scarecrow as one of Batman's more big bads as they say but the other guard basically tells him about what happened to his grandmother basically when his I think father tried to basically uh bring her out of her bathroom after she bolted herself in there that she basically uh, tried to attack his dad with a hammer so even though scarecrow might not be the most physically his fear toxin can bring about massive damage when it comes to the civilians that are uh, doused with his fear and i thought that was really interesting and scarecrow basically tells him that yeah he felt this time but he's gonna try harder next time and stuff and uh, the guy the guard, you know, telling a story about his grandmother and his father basically says next time and they see a giant scarecrow in front of the guarding, um, the carrier van basically and it's explained to us basically, it's shown to us that scarecrow says that he doused them with his fear toxin when he was on his way, um, you know, when he knew that he was going to be transferred to this mental institution that, which again shows the genius level intellect that Scarecrow has and that he has plans like this in place to try to escape even whenever he's being transferred which I thought was really cool but whenever the guards basically are taken out by I guess uh fellow like Scarecrow supporters or something like that which again shows the level of planning that Scarecrow has as a character Jonathan Crane has um, it's revealed to us as the door is open and he hears all these sounds of fighting outside that um, we get to see that Jonathan is basically having dialogue with himself. And that Simon basically thought that he could be, you know, kept in a prison and stuff like that. And that, you know, he was basically smart enough to basically plan ahead and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And that he, you know, basically said that he didn't want Batman to be ahead of his plans that but as we see as the doors open it's revealed who exactly was doing the fighting outside that Batman actually is here and that you know Jonathan stated before Batman even opened the door that he thinks that you know he's sure that the city on the attack is over and Batman opens the door revealing himself to Jonathan Crane and says it is and Jonathan basically says oh it's you and Batman basically grabs him, throws him on the ground, and basically tells him that he's going to transfer him personally to the mental institution. And while they're having their dialogue with each other, their conversation with each other, Jonathan basically says that he feels naked, not wearing his scarecrow mask while Batman's full on in his uh, cape and cowl. So Batman grabs the scarecrow mask for him and he puts it on him. And he says that, yes, that's much better. Thank you, Batman. And Batman puts him into his Batmobile as he transports him basically to the mental institution. And I thought this was a really good way to end the story arc basically in that we get explanations of what's happening with all the different characters that were big players in the Fear State story arc. Miracle Molly basically is serving her term in prison and um, after she's done she'll be able to get out. But um, basically there's a whole new next generation of the collective um, for when she's free again. Again, she's working on the people in there and getting them to join the collective's cause. So we'll see how that 
all plays out in the future issues. And we hear from Scarecrow that apparently there's another person calling himself Batman out there. So I'm not sure if that's talking about the Nets Batman that he's referring to or if it's some enemy that's referring to himself as Batman, like a villain referring to himself as Batman. So we'll see um, what that entails as Batman says, I'll deal with that in time. And Scarecrow basically says that you're invading Batman, and he uh, basically Batman's explaining all the different uh, situations of the characters. As Simon Saint is indeed in prison, he's so Simon Saint is in prison basically, and Amanda Waller basically is gaining control of the magistrates and all the stuff that he basically has and stuff like that. And Batman basically explains that the people that you know do these things they just get uh basically followed up on by other people with power and scarecrow basically says that that must make you furious and batman states that this doesn't and that no it means that there's people that funded saint basically and pointed him in gotham's direction and that they're still out there basically and that it meets it means that there's still work left to be done and you know scarecrow basically says that that must go double for sean mahoney and he says, I heard about that one from myself in GCPD. And we get to see that Batman is thinking about Sean Mahoney as Scarecrow states that Sean Mahoney basically was being worked on by some uh, doctors basically trying to separate, I guess, the armor from his body, um, which included his, I think, weapons as well, like his uh, steel blade that he has on his uh, arm. And he basically waits up during the operation and kills all of the doctors and actually escapes from uh, the prison basically that he was being worked on, I guess. And that's crazy. So it seems like Sean Mahoney slash Peacekeeper 01 is indeed going to be in a future story arc. Hopefully not too far from this one. Uh, maybe give him some time to be away, but uh, he basically gets into this like type of like renegade outfit, this like... Uh, worn out rugged type look with a rug all around him basically this like cloak and he looks really cool so hopefully we see and um you know scarecrow base says that it wasn't all a waste then because his fear uh toxin his fear uh, mind device basically like, like that brain control slash you know messing with your brain type device that mind device basically turned shamoni into a whole new type of person so um scarecrow is right in that the fear state do create uh shamoni slash peacekeeper zero one into this whole new identity that he's possibly taken for himself um in that he will be a completely new person when we see him again in the future issues hopefully and yeah so we get to see that you know scarecrow basically is talking to batman and explains to him that no matter what he's doing it seems like the city just isn't changing and that every victory basically makes things a little worse further down the line which is true as he says, you know, every victory just makes things a little worse further down the line, doesn't it, Batman? That must terrify you. And Batman explains this to um, Scarecrow, but he says that that isn't true. And that, you know, that there's things out there, basically his family, his bad family and stuff like that, that give him hope. His allies that give him hope for a better future. So we see that Harley Quinn and... Poison Ivy are basically sleeping next to each other as Catwoman has arrived, um, which would explain how Poison Ivy's good half was, you know, brought to the garden, basically, um, when we saw her with uh, Harley Quinn, uh, who brought her and the other Poison Ivy, the evil half, together, basically meeting them together so that they could fuse together and become one again. And we just see the gardener basically talk to Catwoman, saying that they deserve it, that they deserve to be happy, which we get to see a whole dialogue between them, basically saying, what exactly they think should be done for Poison Ivy, that they don't know exactly if she's a good guy or a bad guy. Um, so, Catwoman basically tells Gardner to keep in touch, but Gardner says that she's going to be leaving Gotham for a while, and that she's not into staying in these superhero cities because there's just too much trouble in them. There's too much, you know, stuff going on all the time, so she's basically going to be heading out. So Catwoman basically says that she'll see her around, basically makes her leave, and she leaves, and we just see that uh, Poison Ivy basically says that she heard everything that the gardener was talking about, that she doesn't appreciate her basically trying to make life decisions for her, um, that she can make her own decisions basically. And she's not something simple as like a hero or a villain, she's just herself basically doing what she thinks is good for her and probably possibly for Harley Quinn as well. So I thought that was really interesting that um, 
she basically told Garner that she took a piece of her body from her or something like that. So I'm guessing that Garner has a, a place in Poison Ivy being two different people at a point. Um, so I have to look that up and see if that's the case. Maybe that's what she's referred to when she says that no, um, that you took a piece of my mind. Basically, you took a part of my mind without my consent because he thought you knew what was good for me. And Garner says I was just trying to help. So I'm guessing that's what she's referring to in that she separated Poison Ivy's evil half and her more compassionate, kind, and good half. But yeah, so that's what happened with those characters. But going into the end of this uh, whole story arc, you know, this issue, um, we get to see that uh, Scarecrow basically says that, you know, he's having dialogue with Batman saying that, you know, his children, basically, you know, his little bat family, that they must be horrified by the kind of people that Batman's been running, letting run around with them, basically, and himself, being like people like Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and stuff like that. But Batman says that he believes in a second chance for people, and believes that people can be better than what they are now, which I thought was really cool. And we have a really cool line from Scarecrow BC saying that I'm a psychiatrist, Batman. I assure you, some people never change, which is true. Some people actually never change. So I thought that that was a really cool line from it, and we'll see if that holds true for people like Poison Ivy or Harley Quinn in the future. Um, and yeah, so we'll see. But, you know, Batman basically tells uh, Scarecrow that it doesn't bother me that you disagree. There's a whole generation rising up wary of authority and my symbol. And they need heroes too, even if those heroes don't look the way I would choose for them too. Um, and I thought that was a really cool line for Batman because it is true as the time goes on, heroes do change. As we saw in actual real life comics, you know, with the comic books, you guys see anti-heroes rise after a while. And they were like the big thing and stuff like that. So that is true. And we get a whole cool page showing the different story arts that, delve, that were delved into and made by... Uh, James Tini in the fourth and Jorge Jimenez as I thought this page was just fantastic showing just all the great stuff they've brought out to Batman in the last two slash three years um, I'm not sure if it's two or three years but yeah um, really shows what they really brought to the table and I'm gonna miss James Tini in the fourth but um, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about his run as a whole uh, in another video but yeah overall we get to see Clown Hunter basically has uh, started working with um, Ghostmaker and Ghostmaker is trying to train him so I thought that was really cool and apparently they might have a book or I think people are saying they want them to have a book um, I think the uh, annual for 2022 has them in it uh, Ghostmaker and uh, Clown Hunter basically so I thought that was really cool um, that was a cool decision by DC to do that or I'm not sure it was James Dean the fourth and Jorge Jimenez who decided to do that but whoever did decide that that's a really cool team up of characters and shows two new characters basically giving a purpose with each other and giving them a purpose to have their own book and their own storylines and stuff like that so that's really cool hopefully we see that in the future uh, happen in dc comics um give them their own book basically and their own you know stories uh slash storylines but we go into the end of the book basically with scarecrow basically saying that you're lying and that you know he doesn't know i don't know what your point is batman as batman explains to him that no matter what happens with him no matter what happens with scarecrow they're basically got them so he's gonna live on and that's the truth and that everyone's mortal and everyone's gonna die and eventually the next generation will have to take over and i thought that was a really cool messaging to have in this book um at the very end and that he says that scarecrow came so close to winning but he basically failed and he gave it his best as he stated earlier they tried harder than he ever did before um doing this you know fear state plan this was his main plan he's ever had basically the biggest plan he's ever had and he basically failed at it so where does he go from here basically and that batman because he puts his faith in the next generation he doesn't have to worry about outdoing himself or you know um feeling like he can't do enough because it's not just about him it's not just about what he can accomplish on his own and that i thought that was really cool as you know he basically says that you know fear changed him but for scarecrow he utilizes fear he basically lives through fear and basically doesn't change at all and that that must mean something regarding the fear state theory and i thought that was really good uh in diving into that because that's something you don't think about during the whole story arc is that um scarecrow himself has been the same basically his entire life despite diving into more uh higher levels of fear which you would think would change him a bit um so i thought that was a really good critique from batman 
and Batman basically finally arrives with Scarecrow to the uh, the mental institution as he basically says that you're wrong and you're lying and that this is some kind of mind game basically as he can't believe that Batman truly believes all this but he basically says that I guess you know Batman basically tells Scarecrow I guess you'll have to talk that over with your new therapist as he grabs Scarecrow and drags him out of his Batmobile and hands him over to his doctor basically called Dr. Meridane I think or Meridan and Scarecrow has an interaction with her saying, hmm, she's Meriden. As Dr. Meriden tells him, Dr. Crane, I look forward to speaking with you in more detail. I've read all of your work. It's deranged, of course, but deeply fascinating. Order lies. Please bring the doctor to his new quarters. And we get to see her talk to Batman saying, I hope my new hospital can be a light to you as well, Batman. This all began with Arkham's destruction. And now it ends with its replacement. Some things never change in Gotham. And the story ends with Batman basically stating, maybe things should. And that's the end of Batman Fear State. And yeah, that was James Tiddy in the fourth and Jorge Jimenez Batman Fear State storyline slash story art. And wow, what an ending conclusion to the James Tiddy in the fourth and Jorge Jimenez uh run a uh, batman uh really great um i had a lot of high hopes going into fear state um i believe that james tinney and the force batman run had a lot of highs it had some lows in it and i was really hoping that the conclusion to his run was not going to be a low and i was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't basically it was great overall it might be the best story arc in the entire james Tini and the fourth and jorge jimenez a run a batman um and yeah um after reading this um i am gonna miss james Tini and the fourth but i have uh read the abyss storylines slash story arc which is from Joshua Williamson, I believe, and that was great. So um, I am looking forward to a uh, Chips of Darcy's run with Jorge Jimenez, which is supposed to start, I believe, next week or in two weeks from now. Um, but yeah, overall, James Dean the Ford did a really good job. Um, Batman Fear State had a great villain, or great villains, I guess I should state. The action scenes were well uh, drawn. Um, I think that there could have been a little more action in the in the finale, um, a little more focus on Sean and uh, Batman's fight, you know, Peacekeeper 01 and Batman's fight. But other than that, I thought the entire story just flowed really well. Um, the action that was in it was very good. Like I said, everything was drawn really well. Jorge Hermendez is probably the best artist in comics right now, especially in DC comics. And I just always love enjoying uh, looking at his art while I'm reading these uh, storylines slash story arts, um, you know, or comics, I guess you can just say. And yeah, I recommend you check out the story. I will have a link in the description down below to check out on Amazon slash Comicsology uh, legally. And yeah, um, overall, like I said, uh, as far as the run goes, very good run. Um, Fear State, um, like I said, the characters are really well done. I think for the amount of characters that were in uh, Fear State, I think that he did a really good job in balancing all those characters and nothing felt really dragged out like it was just dragged out to be dragged out it felt like everything that was in the story was put in there for the purpose of telling the story and I think that takes a lot of talent it takes a lot of experience of writing these type of stories of using all these characters to know exactly how much you should put for each character to make it still feel organic and to let the story flow the way that it should um, and as far as villains go i thought simon was a good villain uh, ricardo was kind of like a semi villain type uh but he was working with simon saying so i guess you say he's a villain um and he had more of a role than let's say the employees that weren't really villains they were just working for simon um and they truly did believe they were doing good for gotham city but you had sean mahoney which served as the final villain type character or you know final obstacle for batman in a way in the story as well as um you know, being, you know, the magistrate's type of, like, failure in that, um, in the story as well. You also had Scarecrow, which Scarecrow's new, uh, design was awesome. It really fit in well with how he was acting in the entire story. And I, I did enjoy that we got to see Jonathan outside of the costume as well. Um, and as well as his interactions with Batman at the very end in the, in the, uh, 
Batman Fear State Omega issue that ended the story arc, I thought that interaction between him and Batman, you know, Jonathan Crane and Batman was amazing with him putting on the mask, basically Batman putting on the Scarecrow mask for him so that he would feel more comfortable. I think it shows uh, Batman's uh, knowledge of the psychological aspect of his villains, as well as uh, giving him that type of respect and that he respects him in the same way that he respects himself and how he views himself as a different person when he has the mask on. And perhaps he did that so he could get uh, Jonathan Crane's honest thoughts in the conversation on the right to the mental institution, basically. And it seems like this mental institution is supposed to replace Arkham Asylum, which I will see how, lo how long that sticks, but I don't think it'll, that'll stick super long, uh, because Arkham Asylum is it's just, you know, iconic. But we'll see how this plays out, and if we'll see it in future storylines, such story arts. But yeah, that's going to be all, guys. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, as we will be reviewing the Batman Abyss story arc, which takes place right after uh, Fear State, and is written by Joshua Williamson. I don't know who does the artwork um, in that story, but we will mention him uh, when we drop the story uh, video, the full story video, and that will come out hopefully tomorrow or the next day after that. But tonight's video, guys, God bless you until the next lesson. Keep on reading those comments.